has there ever been a season as dramatic as that which took Manchester United into the new decade? A season of drama, excitement. And delight. A season topped by the winning of the most coveted prize in football, the FA Cup. The campaign got off to a sensational start. Just as everyone was ready for the big kickoff, along came businessman Michael Knighton to announce that he was ready to buy the majority shareholding in United. Knighton stole the headlines on opening day and most of the limelight too. The dream of Michael Knighton was to become a personal nightmare, but on August the 19th, United got off to the best possible start against champions Arsenal. A 4-1 win and great debuts for new boys Michael Phelan and the goal-scoring Neil Webb. Well, I told Nottingham Forest towards the end of the season that uh, there was only one club I'd leave for in Britain, uh, leave Forest for to go to, and that was uh, Manchester United. Uh, I was away of England in, uh, in Scotland when I had the phone call that United were keen to, to bring me here. Uh, and uh, once... Every, well, I didn't really sort out the financial deals, other people did, and uh, I came here for the weekend with my wife and child, and uh, I'd already made up my mind to come, and it was only, you know, if my wife liked the area and that, which uh, she did. Uh, I was here for about two hours, I think, I had lunch, and signed uh, that day, and uh, didn't take a lot of persuading anyway. We were playing the league champions at the time, couldn't ask for a better start at your new club. Uh, lovely day, uh, other things had happened at the club, uh, so... It, and it was great for me to make my debut and everything went well in the game uh, and I scored a goal, I scored on my debut which was a terrific feeling. I went home to the wife that night and said, you know, this could be something good this year. Next came Crystal Palace, famous for fireworks and back in Division 1 after years in the doldrums. Again, United get on the goal trail, but it isn't to be. 
and the first sign of troubles ahead come in the dying minutes of the game, as United old boy Steve Coppel sees his side steal a point from the club he still admires. Four days on and trouble stirs for Michael Knighton. Newspaper headlines claim he isn't the man with the money in the United takeover, nor is he a solo operator. Bob Thornton is indeed a partner in my MK Trafford Holdings. He's my dear friend and everyone knows that he is an outstanding and exceptional businessman, the former uh, leader of one of our major retailing units, Demodems PLC. Uh, Bob and I know and understand each other very well. Mr K hits back and he's the calming influence as the Red Army threatens another takeover. This time on the terraces of Derby County's baseball ground. The first defeat of the season sees Fergie about to spend on Middlesbrough defender Gary Pallister and West Ham's Paul Ince. Pally signs and at £2.3 million becomes the costliest player in United history. But he isn't too concerned about the price tag. Yeah, there was a lot of press uh, talk about it after it went through and you know, I would never say that I was worth £2.3 million. I would, you know, you talk to the likes of Paul Gascon and Tony Cotty, they, they'd say the same. Um, but that's the way the market's going at the moment. Um, clubs are asking for ridiculous fees at the moment and uh, I thought Middlesbrough did well sort of overpriced me uh, too much. Um, but they say thankfully Manchester came in and, and paid the money and eventually got in. There's a snag in the Ince deal as he's rejected on medical grounds and there's 10 days of talking before the clubs reach an agreement and Paul moves north. Playing for England in Sweden, Neil Webb is carried off with an Achilles injury. He'd be lucky to play again this season. No Webb and Brian Robson out with bruised ribs, United go to Everton and lose their third game in a row despite a great fight back. And a penalty save from Jim Layton. The Reds are rocking as September starts, 16th in the table with just one win. They signed Danny Wallace from Southampton in another million pound deal. That's seven they've spent this year. And suddenly the sun shines as Millwall come to town. And it's a dream afternoon for Mark Hughes. Now your first goal, the goal in the 12th minute, it was uh, quite a shot. Yeah, it, was, um, it wasn't a bad one. Um, I, I think it was a long ball and I just collected it and um, the grass is uh, quite long at the moment so it just sat up nicely for me and we were able to get good contact on him when he went. A hat trick and a hand in the other two. It's uh, really nobody's going to argue about that. Mark, Mark Hughes, I suppose you enjoyed this one today, did you? Yeah, it went particularly well for myself and obviously for the team as well. Um, we felt uh, up to leading up to this game. We haven't been playing that badly, we just haven't got the breaks really. Um, today, um, we got a few breaks and uh, the goals went in and uh, it was a good performance all around really. The Littlewoods Cup means a trip to Portsmouth after more takeover talk in Manchester. 
it seems as if the Knighton deal has been finalised, and for Chairman Martin Edwards, mixed emotions. Uh, well, I've got very mixed feelings, obviously. I mean, uh, uh, in one sense, it's very sad because uh, you know I've been in the chair for what nearly ten years now, and obviously it's a big wrench to give that up. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the reasons that I did the deal in the first place still still stand. Uh, Michael Knighton. Uh, is quite prepared to, to put money up for or, or to back the uh, development of the Stratford End to the tune of £10 million. He's already made that commitment and that was something that I felt was a long way down the road, you know, had I remained in the, in the chair. So, uh, you know, very mixed feelings, really. Injury to Brian Robson and a two-goal fight back by Pompey spoils things. And three days later comes the blackest afternoon in years. September the 23rd, 1989. Manchester City 5, Manchester United 1, the Reds' biggest defeat in a main road derby. Not even a sparky special can lift the gloom. The knives are out for Alex Ferguson, but he answers his critics with strong words. Well, I don't think it's personal. I think it's just because I'm a manager of Manchester United. I think that Man Manchester United have always been the whipping boys for the press. If they've nothing to write about, then a story about United will, will sell them papers. And I think it's a lot to do with that. And also I think it's a climate and of the modern journalism. Brian Robson's made a remarkable recovery from what at first was diagnosed as a stress fracture of his shin. He's back for England as well as United. The takeover bid reaches a conclusion. Knighton withdraws his offer and takes a seat on the board. The fans say the saga has affected the players. Robo says it hasn't, as two games without a goal follow the city disaster. United look for that lost form. It's a roller coaster season. They hit the heights at Coventry. October ends on a high though. High scoring Southampton come to Old Trafford with high hopes, but the Reds have other ideas. Defeat at Charlton spoils the recovery. Then a week later, the Reds star in their first televised game of the season. Nottingham Forest come to OT, and Pally gets his first goal in a 1-0 win. Um, I think Bruce is a bit disappointed that I took it off him. But, uh, I just saw the ball there. Obviously, Bruce has done great to get up and, and put the ball across, and uh, I was just making sure, I think. Next to Luton, and another victory. United are ninth in the table, six points from the top.
but that win signalled the start of a bleak midwinter. Nil-nil against Chelsea. Defeat at Arsenal. Disaster against Crystal Palace. And flattened by a Lineker special against Spurs. Next to Aston Villa, and defeat spoils the Christmas celebrations. But four days later, a bright star begins to rise as United end the 80s at Plough Lane. Remember the name, Mark Robbins. The new year begins without Brian Robson and any goals against QPR. Ray Wilkins enjoyed his return to Old Trafford and left with some words of hope for United fans. What do you think United need? Just a bit of luck to get they, goals? They're just lacking just that little bit of confidence, mate. A little bit, I honestly feel, a little bit of belief to go and play. They obviously have the talent here, Tom. Um, but it's just a matter of getting people together and getting that, uh, getting that belief in themselves. They've got some super players, and when they string the game together, they look a terrific team. Then on January the 7th, things began to get better the FA Cup round three and a tough one at Nottingham Forest. It's mark one to mark two as the Reds go through. Defeats by Derby and Norwich are forgotten as the cup march goes on. To giant kill in Hereford where Clayton Blackmore provides the killer blow. The cup wins have lifted the fans and Clayton's on target again a week later as United draw with City at Old Trafford. Eleven league games without a win, they find their pride and passion at last at Millwall. Back to the Cup and another away trip. This time to Newcastle and Robbins is at it again. That has just come up to the near post. Anderson just on the edge of the six yard area. And they all miss it except Robbins. It's in. Robbins has done it again. The goal in the 20th minute. Mark Robbins second in the FA Cup. Burridge missed it, wasn't truly struck by Robbins, he just nodded it down, which I think pulled Sweeney on the line. But the referee was well placed and immediately pointed for the goal. Well, amazing, Mark Robbins, one of the smallest players on the pitch. against Mark McGee. And Manchester United with four up from this free kick. And by Bradshaw. Anderson. McClare. Stimson for company. Wallace! Yes! Oh, what a finish! What a finish! Right on the hour! Marvellous!
strike by the little fella. Declared him well. And Stinson on the wrong foot. But it was made by a superb finish. Just a little dart to the right. And my heaven, he thumped it. Angle was tight. But he found it. Scott. Lince has taken the same position on the pitch as uh, Duxbury held. pounds worth of ball from Paul Ince there. Danny Wallace very unselfish and as you say Brian McClear just knocking it towards goal rather than picking his spot. Very relieved and uh, again the game switches round 3-2. It's an amazing game. Manchester's buzzing with talk of cup glory. A 1-0 defeat at Chelsea's forgotten as the Reds get ready for the quarter-finals. Before that, Luton at Old Trafford and the first double of the season. United are two games away from Wembley and blunt the blades at Bramall Lane. Just one goal, but worth so much to Brian McClare. Controversy surrounded the win. 
Had the ball crossed the line before Mark Robbins won that deciding corner? And defeats by Liverpool and Sheffield Wednesday start the relegation talk again. Suddenly, there's a change. Colin Gibson, who's been out of the game for almost two years, came back to face Wednesday and was in action again at Southampton. Also back, Neil Webb, his first game for seven months. Two minutes to go, and guess who gets the winner? That's right, Mark Robbins. <laughs> Week later, three more points go in the bag, and three goals for the Reds against Coventry. So comes the semi-final, Oldham Athletic at Main Road, and on a day when Steve Coppel's Crystal Palace have beaten Liverpool. Back in action, Brian Robson. Well played by Barlow. Snake by Pallister, but he's able to recover. Suggests that Oldham are winning about 90% of the 50 50 balls. Hughes. Barrett. Bruce. And Robson! It's 1 1. He's done it again. Turning a replay, that's four semi-finals running in which he scored. Beautifully played through. And Robson, always got a touch on it, but couldn't keep it out. Excellent first-time ball. Always make on himself a little unlucky, but Brian Robson has done it again. Well, amazing, isn't he? There he is, a little smile. And really, suddenly gets the United back in a game that they were looking so edgy. And really, the 
I suppose the selection is justified in, in that goal, isn't it? Neil Webb gets it. Lovely touch through as Oldham try to play the offside, and there it is. Bannister doing well to protect the lead. Hands the captain's band to Steve Bruce and comes off to a tremendous ovation. Given it all. Scored the equaliser. But in the end, was clearly running out of steam. Here's Ince. We need even more from Paul Ince, who's been the pick of the midfield, I think. Paul is hopeful of a first touch. New challenge for Barlow. As an out and out winger, if that's the way he's being asked to play. First round to Barlow. Phelan. Slightly stubbed it, but it comes to Gibson. And... It's Webb. There was a little hesitation. And Webb is engulfed. Came across to Gibson, it was slightly mishit, I think, with the early header in, and it was Webb. It came more off his forehead, the ball hitting that rather than the reverse. He was turning with a goalkeeper who decided to come late, and Manchester United have the lead. Neil Webb is their scorer. And uh, Alec Ferguson with his arm round his skipper. Could be useful. Redfern needed Bruce to play it. The new skipper demanding concentration. Irwin. Redfern got away. It's good cross. Marshall! What an unbelievable day this is! It was a good cross, Redburn got away from Ince. It was half clear, but only to Marshall, who thumped it into the far bottom corner. And it's 2-2. Two -two. Really did well then, Redburn. And so did Marshall. Two goals inside three minutes. And once again, Wembley doesn't know who will be its second visitor in May. Richie showed too much nicked away by McClare useful for Wallace test of his pace now test of his finish and he's equal to both the face of delight is lost in the crowd a fine ball through the finish as the goalkeeper came, somewhat feet first, was what was required. First through two defenders, and Manchester United lead 3-2. Great ball from Brian McClear. Once again, Oldham trying to hold the line, and Danny Wallace, with that extra pace, just timed his run perfectly. Got through, gained the goalkeeper. Didn't hit the shot that well, he scuffed it a bit. But I'm sure he's not complaining, because once it went past all that, uh, even though it was going very slowly, it was always going to make the goal. Now, uh, Owen, who couldn't find the crosses, can he now find the free kick? Met well by Pallister. That's what you call a good recovery. Milligan. Yes, the space here for Marshall. And Palmer's far side. It's all square again. stuff of schoolboy comics Palmer it was a fine ball from Milligan that put Marshall away and all of them have come back again marvellous stuff
it ends all square, 3-3 after extra time. And three days later, it's the replay. Still Robson, Wallace, Robson just inside, giving me back, he's screaming to be giving it back, Wallace. Oh, he's going to go in, yes, McClare! Brian McClare, is that going to be another crucial goal in the FA Cup? Brian Robson who started the move, Wallace, it got a little nick, and there was McClare all alone for as easy a goal as he will probably ever score. Unlucky deflection by Henry. Referee says play on, although the flag went up briefly. The free kick is taken. Irwin, it suddenly opened up in front of him. Irwin again. Milligan. Holden. Peel for handball. Not given. Holden's cross, it's a bit short. And it runs to Ritchie! Andy Ritchie! The man who began his career as a teenager at Old Trafford has beaten Jim Layton. And again, in this quite remarkable FA Cup semi-final, it is all square. It was deflected across by Webb and thumped home by Andy Ritchie. Piece of proof that the referee was right. Sudden increase in impetus again. Feeling. Robbins. Yes! What a remarkable record this young man has got. His third goal in the FA Cup. And again, Alec Ferguson's side is within touching distance of Wembley. Took two touches, and then it was a directed rather than a hit shot. Scored against Nottingham Forest. Scored up at Newcastle. Scores against Oldham Athletic. And all over it is now. Manchester United are at Wembley. The winning goal scored by a man, Mark Robbins, who may wonder whether he will have a place in the final itself. But he's taken Manchester United to the FA Cup final and ended Oldham Athletic's dream of going to Wembley in two finals. But how well Joe Royal side... Three days later, there's more to rejoice over at QPR, as victory sets the scene for survival. On loan goalkeeper Les Seeley's calling to the side for the injured Jim Layton and stands firm as United win.